good. Uh, looking like it's time to change the alternator out on this uh, expedition. All right, guys. So we are changing the alternator out right there on this 5.4. Uh, 2003 expedition. This is a two valve. This is not a three valve. It's really not the hardest thing to get to. I mean, you know, it could be harder, but it's not too bad. It's just sort of right there. First thing we're going to do is we are going to disconnect the negative end of the old battery and then uh, we're going to pick it up from there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do after we disconnect the battery, we're going to take the top of this off, uh, this air cleaner. We're also going to remove the tubing here. Not all of it. We're going to keep, uh, you know, where the where the air filter goes. We're going to leave it there. We're just going to take everything off the top here, and then uh, we will pick it back up as soon as we get that taken off. All right, so now that we have access to the alternator right here, it's really not that hard to get to. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts, it looks like. Really not that many. Uh, two different connections. And of course, we've got to do something about the belt. We're going to handle the belt first. Uh, so we will knock that out and I will show you how it's done. All right, so the goal here is to get a breaker bar into this hole right here. Hopefully yours goes in a lot easier than mine did. I had a lot of difficulty getting that joker in there. All right, now that your breaker bar is in there, you take it, push towards the driver's side from the passenger side, and this belt is going to ease up, and you're going to be able to slide it off the alternator. Now, do not lose where this belt goes or drop your your uh, breaker bar. Yeah, either way it's fine. So what I like to do a lot of times is set the belt down exactly how it lays. So you know, here's my alternator. The belt is very uh, slackly laying. Uh, you wanna make sure you keep it where it goes. You can see it's, it's really hanging off of that pulley there. Uh, we really wanna be careful and not get this belt off track. Let's go and get this alternator out. Alright guys, so there are four, one, two, three, four, ten millimeter bolts on this bracket here. We're just going to go ahead and pull this up. Go ahead and get these four ten millimeters out. So now that those are out, we got two more 10 millimeter bolts. This one and that one over there. That won't be too hard. And then we're going to pick it up and then disconnect the wires. Hopefully we don't twist anything up uh, in the process. I don't think we're going to have to loosen them all the way because this alternator's actually got, it's not all the way around down here. It's actually open uh, for some reason. So uh, we'll take a look at it. Alright, so on the back of this alternator, there's two plugs. This one, you smash in, and it should pull out eventually. Be careful not to damage this. You may need a screwdriver. This is also why you go ahead and unplug the battery. So I don't shock the fool out of myself when I do something like that. This right here is a 10 millimeter. I'm just going to go ahead Use the same 10 millimeter I've been using. Just go ahead and disconnect it. No biggie. Comes right off, save this, because you never know if the new kit will have one. Save it. 
disconnect that. Alternator's out. Now at this point in time, I like to go ahead and compare side by side old versus new. I've changed these out before where these pulleys are actually different. This one is a five and this one is also five. What I mean is there's five ribs. Uh, I'm not sure if you can count that on each of these. I did one of these on the F-150 one time and I believe this one was a seven and this one was a five. So I had to replace the pulley, the old pulley with the new pulley. Uh, we're also gonna take a look at our connections. Everything looks to be the same. Same three are in there. Same three are in there. Not sure if that's picking up. Uh, the tops appear to be the same. Everything appears to be the same, even on the bottom with these uh, weird rings going on here. Uh, everything appears to be the same. Everything should bolt right back up exactly like it was before. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look and let's put this new one back in exactly the way we got the old one out. All right, so since we didn't take those two bolts all the way out, we're just going to set this thing right back down in there. And if I can get it back in there, I'm going to set it right down in there. And start bolting everything back down. Woo, that just went right in there, didn't it? One thing I'm going to do is, of course, tighten these down. But I'm not going to put them all the way tight until I get that bracket uh, all the way on there. Mainly because, I don't know if you saw that, but it sort of tilts a little bit uh, when you tighten it all the way down. I just want to make sure that the bracket on the top here goes how it should um, you know, before I get it too tight and have to loosen everything back up. We're just going to do this live rather than hyperlapsing it. I don't think that's a 10. Yeah, that's smaller. Might be a 10. Not sure. Let's say it. Just plug this back in. Tighten it back down. Plug our plug back in. Everything seems to be going back on as it should. And my, there we go. Now let's get our bracket back on there. Make sure we all line up together. It appears that they do. Remember, this front one had this one on there because of the wires that it had. So, everything looks good. I am just going to go ahead and tighten these four bolts up. As they sit, we'll pick it back up in a second. All right, so now that we're here, we get to ride this old struggle bus and try our very best to get this belt on this pulley in one go round. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. That actually went a lot easier than what I thought it would. And somehow all of our pulleys are still on there and looking good. I'm amazed that that actually worked. That is all right. Now, from here, we just go ahead and connect back all of our intake lines here, and we took out a little bit ago. So, this isn't very hard. We just plug everything back in that we unplugged earlier. No biggie. Just be sure we get it all back in. There's that. There's that. That's all the way on there. That's all the way on there. Put our filter back in. I 
can't get it back in that direction. Got to admit, I've never been the best at getting this filter in. I've always struggled with these things. Yes, that's in. Seems right. And then, of course, last part of our journey connect the battery back up so we can get this thing fired up and test it. Remember, we were running really low, just a little bit ago. Let's see what we're running now. All right, all we got left now is uh, put your thing back on here, your cover. Make sure you get all your stuff right. Oh, that's the hardest time with this thing. I can never get it lined right up. But, uh, you see your best. And then hope it lines up. Well, I just about forgot. We gotta record what it's doing. Not as high as I would like it to be, but definitely better. I like to see about 14.2 to 14.4 out of it. Anything over 13.5 is good. This one also has the DVD player, which is actually playing right now. The air conditioner is on, and various other electronics are currently on. So I will be satisfied with that 13.7 to 13.8 that's running right now. Like I said, though, I would like to see myself 14.2 to 14.4, but I will definitely take that over a dead battery any day. I hope it helps. Thank you much.